Hey guys, Tasha here from Start a School Crochet. I wanted to show you today how to do a little bit of work in a program called Winstitch. And here I have downloaded the version. I'm not sure if they have a free version or not of this, but I think this is a really great um, place to start if you want to do images. You can convert images like it says here, or you can create a new chart from scratch. Um, which I'm going to do a new chart from scratch. So we're going to do choose your design, push OK. So here you can choose your chart width and your chart height. Each of these is going to be um, a square. So you can kind of ignore the stitches per inch because this is actually made for cross stitch. But I usually, you know, it doesn't really matter what you put here. What really matters is the size of your grid and this is what your grid is going to be. So to do a test here, we're going to do a 15 by 15 grid. Don't you don't have to mess with any of this. And for this, you can do it says square normal cross stitch. You can click on there. That's what you want to do, just square normal cross stitch. And then choose okay. So here it'll bring up a window and it'll show you, oh, this little tiny square. And you're thinking, oh God, how am I supposed to manipulate that? Just here's your zoom right here. Just click on the right arrow and it'll zoom in. So this is really great for creating patterns for hats. Um, I'll do another video on how to do fonts and you can do font hats with this, but this is just a basic video if you wanted to create something simple. This is 15 stitches. Each square represents one stitch of your pattern. You have a whole wealth of colors here that you can choose from. I found that choosing a color that's neutral, like a crew, is best, even if your pattern's going to be a different color, because it's easier on the printer that way. It doesn't use up as much as your ink when you print it out. And also it just is kind of nice. You can use mocha beige too if you want to just play around with it. So we're going to use a darker color then to play around with. But here you can just create a pattern. Um, we can do a heart pattern. So a lot of times you can find the center and just start touching your squares. And you can create a heart pattern. If you want to just do one side and it be symmetrical, there's an option here where you can click on this little dotted box. It also shows you help features, which is great. Um, so how you select is it's going to have a little tiny icon. You can see the icon changed. You're going to go up to the top corner of where the top of your color bars are on that side and on this side. Just go to that, find that corner, click and hold it with your left mouse. So click and hold and then drag it and it'll highlight your area. When you let go, this little box here shows up. So here what we want to do is we actually want to copy this area right here. We're going to copy it and then control V is paste and when you do a con well, I don't know if that worked very well I think something messed up so I'm going to do that again yeah it's messed up so I'm going to click on this box and click it again to make sure I'm highlighting properly so there we go it's kind of testy so I'm going to say copy and then I'm going to do a control V again. See, oh, there it is. So it brought it back up for me. And I'm going to lay it right next to it like this and just click your mouse one more time. And you go back up here, find your edge again, highlight it. Then when this box comes up, we're going to flip it. We're going to flip it horizontally. So I'm guessing that would be left to right. There we go. So here we have it. And I'm going to match it up with the sides and I'm going to paste it there. Oops. 
it looks like I should have cut it instead of copied it. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to do it again. So here I'm going to cut it. There we go. Oh wait, no, forget about that. Escape or Control Z. Control Z is undo. So let's try this again. Usually it says when you flip it horizontally. Like I said, this program is not perfect. Okay, so let's try that one more time. So we're going to flip it. We're going to do it left to right. And see, normally those shouldn't come up like that. I don't know why it's doing that, but hey, that's okay. So this is going to show you guys how to fix these mistakes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my white and I'm just going to fill in the squares that don't need to be there. And using pixels, there's a lot of this in um, working with the pixels. Oh, did I mess up that? Wait, one, two, three. I may have. Okay, there's three up there. So there, I fixed my heart. Okay, so there's my heart. And when you have this, you want to be able to see what your colors are. Because when you print out your written pattern, um, it does a lot of interesting things too. If you don't fill in the background or fill in the white spaces where you want them white. But here I'm going to center this. Um, and actually I need to redo that because I made it too big. Like I said, not a perfect program, but I like it. It works. So I'm going to move this and see if I can't center it. Well, it's pretty centered, I guess. There's two. So we've got two squares on top, one square on each side, and two on the bottom. So yeah, it's centered. So I don't need to center it anymore. So what I'm going to do is um, show you guys how to highlight the stitches and also get rid of stitches that you don't need. Okay, so here you can say you right click it when you're when it's highlighted on your stitch and you say highlight sti stitches of active color, which these are the ones that I filled in with white. So those are all my white stitches. But when you print out the pattern, if you're going to do a row by row pattern, um, it will it'll only print these white stitches. It's not going to print the background. So we need to make the background white. So go up to here and here's your fill bucket and you're going to say flood fill. And then you're going to click on this any square that's in the background and just click it and then say yes. That's going to highlight the rest of those and see there's again the little quirkiness. Do the same thing for the center. in any area that needs to be filled in with white like that. So there we've filled in and now if we click on our other mocha beige you'll see that those are highlighted there and then we're going to unhighlight so that we can see our regular pattern again. Great, so we have all of our stitches filled in. All these other colors they can go away so we're going to go up here to the palette and we're going to say remove all unused thread from palette and that'll simplify what's over here on the left hand panel sometimes you have to actually click it again to see them all drop off but there we go so we have our two white and our mocha beige now pretend we're finished with this and we want to print it out you're going to go to import export export tunisian crochet graph Gan. Here you have an option to do a C2C. You have a left to right, right to left, alternating right and left. I don't use these top two. I only use alternating right to left because it's the easiest. And also a C2C diagonal 
where the right arrow, the first arrow is pointing towards the right. So here I'm going to choose row by row. This is row by row. This is C2C. Alternate right to left. You want to do color blocks. You can do um, color palettes, but I always do the color blocks. You want your sequence from bottom to top, but you can choose top to bottom if you'd like. For the method, just say do nothing, and then you're going to choose print. Takes a minute. So here you say letter, um, yeah, that's fine. Choose okay. And then I usually print it to a PDF file and then say print. It might take a minute, which mine is doing right now. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's asking me to save it. So I'm going to save it as heart. And I'm going to do it on my desktop. So now it's going to create the PDF file. And usually my PDFs pop up afterwards. So we'll see. Yes, it did. So here's my PDF file. And it has a bottom, it says bottom to top. It tells you how many stitches to do per row. 15 to start, 15 back. And then it starts to tell you how many of each square you need, which is really great. And this is what I did my rainbow C2C. I usually just only keep this section in my pattern because we're not using DMC yarn. Um, all right, so let's get back to wind stitch. That's my daughter and that's my grandson. Hello, daughter and grandson. Uh, let's see, where's my wind stitch? Not sure where it went. Oh, okay. Want to pause? Okay, I guess it took me to a different um, desktop that I had open there. But okay, so that's how we export. So if you want this image um, here, it doesn't have the best um, image es exporting. Um, it, it actually exports a tiny little thumbnail, which I don't really like. Or um, here, export thumbnail to PNG. That's really, really super tiny. So what I usually do is I take a screenshot of it and then I crop it down. Um, or you can say save as, go up to file and save as. It might do a picture. No, it doesn't. Okay, so this is what I normally do is I open up a, a snippet tool, which is my snipping tool, which all programs usually have a snipping tool. And then I say new. And then I highlight it. And there's my snip. Or actually, I believe, let me see this. Import X. I think if you print the file, it'll let you print it. Yes, here it is. So you can print it symbols on colors um, or just the colors. I like just using color blocks. Here's where you can uh, give it a title, a copyright. You can say whether or not you want the key to be printed, where you want your thick lines to be and your thin lines to be. You want it bottom to top and row and columns and printing the center mark. And then here you can adjust how many symbols you want on each page. Our graph is only 15 wide, so I'm gonna scroll down to where it's 17 and choose preview and you can see what it's going to look like and then you can go ahead and print it out there using adobe pdf print it to pdf or you can print it out on your printer okay i think that's it for lesson one on how to use wind stitch if you guys like this video please leave a thumbs up and a like and subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and this is a part of the Fair Isle Cal 2019. 
And all of that information and links will be in the description below. Happy crocheting, guys. I hope you make some beautiful pictures. I'll be doing another video pretty soon on other tips and tricks on how to import pictures and do text using WinStitch. Take care.